Okay, let's pick up where we left off. This is uh, our second lesson on HTTP, Hypertext Transport Protocol. Uh, just to recap what we did in that first lesson, uh, I just did basically, I didn't spend a lot of time in HTTP, I did mostly a review of the other layers. I reviewed the um, uh, transport layer, I reviewed the internet layer, I reviewed the data link, I uh, shouldn't say data link, the uh, network access slash link layer, and I talked a little bit about the application layer and that was hypertext transport protocol. Now we're going to spend this lesson exclusively focused on HTTP. So basically what's happening here is after the handshake completed, we just saw that happen in, in the last lesson we were talking about, uh, now we're going to actually uh, initiate a request to get information from the San Diego State web server. This IP here under the source is my IP for my computer at home. This IP is the San Diego State destination, San Diego State University web server. And I'm making what's called a GET request. A GET request is simply a request to get information from the website. It's the first HTTP packet uh, that is making this request. When you first see the first frame for HTTP, you're generally going to see GET in that request because that's the request to get the website content. And I want to emphasize that the term payload becomes very appropriate here. I'm actually clicked on the hypertext transfer protocol uh, header here in this frame number eight uh, and this is the application layer header as we mentioned this is the transport that should become more familiar to you now this is the transport layer header transport control protocol this is the internet layer header um, under internet protocol and this ethernet 2 is actually the uh, link layer or the network access layer they mean the same thing so back to layer four here four three two one just to review back to layer four I can see a bunch of text in here do you see that text in here and it says get HTTP I know it may be a little hard to read and then it says accept image dot gif image dot uh, jpeg image dot pj peg image a lot of references to images I see references to shockwave to flash a lot of information there and basically what that is is the request for the San Diego State University homepage. That's what's in that request. That, that text there is actually the payload in the frame. It's the real data we're trying to send across the network. Everything else in the packet is overhead like source and destination IP addresses, source and destination port numbers, source and destination MAC addresses. All that information is just the required overhead to get the frame delivered to San Diego State's website. It's just like the uh, example I mentioned previously where you're mailing a letter through uh, the US you know, snail mail. When you put a letter into an envelope, the letter itself that you wrote is the payload. All the other information, the envelope itself, the return address, the sender address, the stamp, uh, taking it to deliver it to the post office, that's all the overhead involved to get the letter delivered. But the payload is actually the letter you stuff in the envelope. That's the same thing that we're looking at right here, highlighted in blue, and I'm, I'm highlighting with my yellow cursor here. That's the payload that's going into this frame. This frame is actually 621 bytes in size. I'd say roughly about 60, 62 bytes of it is the overhead. The rest is the payload. You can actually break it down and look at that, but we're not going to spend time on that right now. Um, actually, you see it right here where it says LEN. That's the link. That's the amount of payload in the frame, 567 bytes. That's actually uh, very important for what I'm going to mention next. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the payload. So the total frame is 621 bytes. That includes all the headers, you know, the IP address information, MAC addresses. If you took 621 here and subtracted 567, whatever that is, I think that's um, 33 plus 21, I think it's 54 bytes. It would be 54 bytes, if I did that right, of overhead. The remaining 567 bytes, where it says length, the length value here, is the actual payload. That's all this stuff. Uh, that I'm highlighting right now with my cursor. What is interesting is the next frame. If you look, the next frame is actually from the web server at San Diego State to me, to my IP, the destination, and this is simply an acknowledgement of delivery. You know it's an acknowledgement because the frame, for one thing, is very small. It's only 60 bytes. Do you see that? And also the length value, the amount of payload in the frame, is zero, which seems kind of odd. There's no payload in the frame. This is simply an acknowledgement of delivery from um, the San Diego State website to me. Uh, it's acknowledging that it received my request for their website. Does that make sense? I hope so. 
uh, and the length is zero, which is interesting. Look at the acknowledgement number though. This is kind of interesting. This is something I want to mention. Remember when we completed the handshake, the sequence and acknowledgement numbers on both sides were equal to one. That was the three-step handshake. You would think as we go through the transmission that the acknowledgement and sequence numbers would increase by one, but that's actually not what happened. Not, that is not what happens. What happens is the sequence and acknowledgement numbers increase by the amount of payload that is moving across the network and verified to be delivered. So let's back up. Notice here that the acknowledgement number on this frame 9, this is again from San Diego State's website to me, is 568. Do you remember what that means when the acknowledgement number is 568? It means the next sequence number coming from me should be 568. But why would it be 568? Why wouldn't it be something like 2 or something? The reason it's 568 is you take the uh, number for the sequence number from the pre previous communication from me, which is 1. You can actually see it if you come, go back here. You can see right, let's see, right here. That was a frame to complete the handshake from me to the San Diego State server. You can see here that the sequence number is equal to one. You can also see it down here. The next time I send anything to San Diego State is right here. And the sequence number you see is still one because this is the frame that actually is, con is containing the payload. It's the frame that follows that kind of confirms the payload was delivered. If we look at that frame, I'm just skipping the frames from San Diego State being the sender, going to me here, you see the sequence number is 568, and you also see it here is 568. The reason it's 568 is because I delivered 567 bytes of payload in this frame right, right here. You see this where the length is 567 bytes, that's all this stuff down here, all this stuff in blue I'm highlighting with my cursor. Basically, I delivered that many bytes of data, of real payload, and the reason the sequence number went from 1 to 568 is it was 1 plus the payload delivered is the next frame, and the next frame is right here, and that's why the sequence number is 568. And as you scroll through this, you will see over and over that that is the case. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do another one of these, uh, but that's kind of how it works. You'll see that sequence number. I'll just jump ahead here. You'll see now the sequence number is 568. That's because I haven't sent anything yet. I just sent an acknowledgement back to San Diego State. Those are zero bytes. You can see that right. Um, let's see. Yeah, this frame is 54 bytes, and there's actually no data in it. The length is zero. Do you see that? That's why that sequence number didn't go up. But you will see eventually it will go up. It's 568 here. Let's, um, how much payload do we send in this frame? We sent 356 bytes of payload in this frame. That's what that length value is. So if we take 356 and add it to, what was it again? I think 568. Remember, 356 plus 568, that should be the next sequence number. Uh, and let's see if it is. Sequence number 924, I believe if you do the math, that is true. Um, 568 plus, I already forgot the number here, 568 plus 356 should be the next sequence number. Again, this is from me, and I hope that makes sense, 924. So you can see those sequence numbers are increasing by the amount of payload being, um, it, it's a verification of payload being delivered. It just keeps increasing that sequence number to keep track of how much data uh, in the delivery has actually occurred. If that sequence number never arrived, we'd have to resend, and then once that acknowledgement comes back from the uh, recipient, then that sequence number will increase because it means the payload was delivered. So I hope that makes sense. That's We, we can spend all day on this. I don't want to get too involved, but I just wanted to give you an overview of you know how that worked. It's kind of interesting how it works. So now we're up to a sequence number of 924. I just want to back up one more step here. You notice the acknowledgement number on the prior frame, that's from San Diego State to me, is 924. That's because it's telling me that it received successfully that prior frame for me that contained the payload, then it increases the acknowledgement number from what it was previously, which should have been 568. Let me double check that. Uh, I think it's right here, 568. Those other two frames didn't have anything in them, that's why it didn't increase. But then basically, as this acknowledgement number is going up on San Diego State side, that means it's receiving the payload. 
and it's telling me it expects the next sequence number for me to be 924. It's basically telling me, you're doing great. Keep sending the payload. Keep sending the frames with the payload. And that's what's happening. That's, that's true for any type of HTTP or um, I should say TCP-based connection. The way the payload is delivered, whether it's FTP, downloading or uploading a file, um, whether you're downloading some program from an FTP site, this process works exactly the same way. The way all those frames are tracked is by the sequence and acknowledgement numbers. So I wanted to make sure uh, I cover that with you guys. So when you're troubleshooting a connection, if you see um, the frames aren't getting through or you're seeing a lot of retransmissions, those, those would be apparent in the sniffer because you would see the, the same uh, frame repeating itself over and over. It has the same sequence and the same acknowledgement number, the same payload. If it wasn't delivering, then that would identify there's some kind of problem on the network. The problem could be on the server that uh, you're downloading from. It could be some problem uh, on a, a host or I should say a, a router across the network. There can be many things involved, but the key is identifying that and then you start looking at ways you can figure out what's going on. You might want to try some other FTP sites uh, to see if the problem is unique to that. Uh, we'll look at some other things called trace route and ping later on in the lessons that will be a way of verifying connectivity with hosts. There's a lot of things you can do, but basically um, if you see the frames are repeating themselves over and over, uh, they're being retransmitted, then there's some kind of problem. And if you see it happening with a lot of different hosts on the network, then there's probably a problem on your network, not a problem with a particular server. If you see it with just a particular server, then the problem's most likely with that server. But if you see it happening over and over with many hosts, uh, many servers or FTP servers or HTTP servers, you've probably got a problem with your own network or, or something like that. Okay, so we covered that. I think we did pretty well. Um, I just want to mention a few more things. I want to go a little bit farther down and try to find some large size frames. So I'm looking at frame 22. That one's not very big. I'm trying to find a frame from San Diego State that has a fair amount of data. And here's one. It's got 1434 bytes. This is frame 19. And you can see, I just want to emphasize the payload is in, um, let's see here. Uh, let's not use that one. Let's use, um, trying to find one that has HTTP for the protocol. One second here. Here's one that's interesting. This is kind of interesting. Uh, it's just interesting when you find things. It says get the fight song. So I, I'm assuming the San Diego State fight song is somewhere on their um, on their link. I bet if I went to the home page it would probably have something to do with that. Uh, I'm not going to check that but you might want to check that. Uh, that's what that request is. It's requesting some kind of object related to the the uh, famous fight song of San Diego State. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop now. I think we've done uh, got this pretty well covered, and we're going to move on to the next lesson.